Graham Gartland here at the Hellfire Club. Welcome to Clear the Head. Each week we'll be talking to a member of staff from Shamrock Rovers Football Club. We'll be going on a walk through their life and their story. For, the, for obviously coming back from the African nations, that must have been a surreal experience, was it? Ah, it was unbelievable. It doesn't matter who you are or who you're going to yeah. play, they just love football that much. Like, I remember growing up in school, like someone asked me, like, oh, where are you from? Like, and I say, oh, my dad's from Cape Bread. And the next question you get was like, well, where's that? A few times I used to tell people, like, oh, my dad's from Portugal, just because it was easier to yeah. explain it. Like, I had me days where I was just like, okay. I'm feeling down here, I don't know yeah. why, or just feeling flat. I feel bad, what are you doing up here? Yeah, Deirdre rang and five banks were actually refusing us. And that sent me Mrs. Oliver. Yeah, just like, this is never gonna, I'm never gonna get it. I was like, luckily, we just need one bank. Did you have a good weekend, Andy? Ah, it wasn't bad, yeah. <laughs> you? Yeah, decent. I don't slide actually. Yeah, I'm sorry, after the weekend, quite a tie Valentine's Day. Yeah. I'm flowing, but I had to run, out, run away out this and get some flowers. All right. Did um, you just out of the gym? Yeah, yeah, double session today, like so. Just finished off in the gym there and resting for the day with me, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, go on, little chat. Gym. Uh, it's good, yeah, it's coming along. I think the rest of it is to finish off now this week, but uh, it has everything we need now to get a good session in, like, and it's, it's just great being. Being there now, we're not moving around, like, do you know what I mean? You finish training, you have your bit to eat, you're walking into the gym, it's great. Yeah, and obviously then, you missed the game on Friday. Yeah. Because you're, they're obviously watching your load for the for obviously coming back from the African nations. That must have been a surreal experience, was it? Ah, it was unbelievable. As I say, uh, it, was, it was sort of mixed, like, but from the from where we started, COVID hit our camp and there was a bit of uh, unrest in the yeah. group. As I say, I think for the first, uh, first six days, we only maybe had nine maximum training at a time. And we really? had that many positive uh, cases that they were training together because one of the coaches has positive as well. Seriously? Yeah, yeah. and then there was, there was our holes. We meant to go to Morocco to play a friendly, play two games over there, but they had four cases as well. So they went on, on lockdown and we had to stay in the Cape for a bit longer. So by the time we got to Cameroon, we were probably delayed by about three or four days and we only had half the squad. Yeah. Uh, Must have been hard then because obviously you want to walk with your starting 11 and you want to have things in place and you want to have practice games as well. And to not be able to do that must have been probably a little bit worrying as well not just 100%. like from your point of view as in you want to train with the people you're going to play with but worrying going like are we going to be okay going into this now definitely especially for me because obviously I, I finished in November yeah. a lot of lads are playing through so I just took two weeks off and I was back training uh, in, in the gym and up in yeah. Roadstone I was doing a bit with Glenn and, and his young Phil Larkin um, That's right. we were training a bit so when I went away I was looking forward to getting uh, two or three games on my belt and yeah. maybe peak there like so we were always going into the force against Ethiopia and I was like, oh, I don't know how far I'm off of here yeah. or where I am, you say. Hard I'm missing trying to play. It's very hard to judge. Uh, so that's why I was so happy that like, we didn't really play well really in the first game, I thought, but I was just so happy to get the result because it was just about getting three points on the board because after all that sort of preparations didn't go into plan, we had a good base to build on and it's really important that we got learned to, to know in there that the force win or any win in that group it's a great stepping stone to getting through to the knockout phases. Yeah. See, looking in at it, like, and, and uh, you can explain this so much better than me, the whole tournament just looks so rich and so invigorated and so joyful in terms yeah. of, like, it's like, it's the biggest sport in Africa, right? Or probably other than rugby in South, South Africa, maybe. You, you'd you know better than me. But it just looks so enjoyable and there was such a, f I wouldn't, don't want to say free spirit towards, but it was like, obviously, after the lockdown then, yeah. there was a real joyous, Thing towards it was that felt in and was it like that in the camp as well or were you secluded in the camp or did you just get out to see much of it yeah see with the covid and that and uh obviously with all your preparations you don't leave the hotel that much right okay. so when you're there the sort of that sort of suppressed feeling of like uh, just sort of yeah. preparing and you know something's building that's yeah. probably the, the overwhelming feeling something was building and building then when you go train and you see people in the street they see your team bus with the name ah. they say gives them a lift and they're running out to the streets they're clapping their hands and you arrive ah, in the train train facilities which right next to the stadium which at a top to be fair and you come out and you, you just get the sense like this is why we're here yeah Do you know what i mean this is it and i suppose the best the best one i can give when we went to play cameroon uh they were, were allowed 80 percent capacity in the oh, stadium really? so uh it was we came out about five minutes before cameroon going through our warm-ups and uh, it was a busy enough stadium at this stage cameroon came out and i've never heard sound like it <laughs> i swear to god it was like people were just arriving to come to war yeah and i was just started looking around at the players at cape i was like this is what we're here, like, yeah. you know what I mean? This is what you want to test yourself for, like, everyone's against us here. Yeah. Uh, I think there was maybe 
forty thousand the stadiums felt like hundred thousand. Honestly, the, yeah. no, the noise was incredible. Yeah, was it? Was that surreal? Like I always look at the joy in their faces of like the, their kids looking up at Jews coming. Like you're yeah. saying, you're looking out a bus and you see that kid looking up, thinking, Oof. like they like I don't I. You have small snippets of it every now and then as a bus scene that obviously being from Ireland over there, the mu- you must have given you immense pride. A hundred percent, as you say, like what I found even like before the AFCON when playing in Africa, it doesn't matter who you are or who you're going to yeah. play, they just love football that much. Like we were playing Senegal and there we were driving up to the stadium. This is in, in a friendly in back in June and the fans were clapping us in and clapping ah, us off brilliant. the pitch like so it, it doesn't matter if you're if you're going to war with the yeah. team for ninety minutes, they just love football that much that it's just great to see footballers in the country like and yeah, it means a lot, especially when little kids coming up and everyone just they say joy just to try and get a jersey or a sight of people like yeah. it's, it's it's brilliant to see like you you could also see how much it meant to you because i see we there's a great clip of you singing the national anthem yeah and you you proper were, were into it and i was i was saying obviously it's your dad that's from cape Verde. yeah and what when did he move over here and what was his journey like to get here which allowed you to then develop in ireland but then go and play play over there and help how proud was he of that? Ah, oh, he's immensely proud. You say, like uh, the, the island he's from is, is Sunny Clow right. in, uh, in okay. Cape Verde. Obviously, there's ten islands. It's the ten islands. You didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, there's ten islands, and uh, actually, the last time we played, we played different islands, Selby's End, which is pretty close. Okay. So we came to watch that game. He, ah. he spent a week there, and he went went the week back home after the game to right. see my granddad and the rest of the young. Oh, you still that. have family over yeah, there? Yeah, I have my ah, granddad brilliant. still down there. I think he's 93 now, going strong. <laughs> still <laughs> working on the farm every day. Is he a pico as well? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, funny enough, uh, oh, he has this. My dad was telling me there. He has this same routine as me in the morning we get up at the same time we have our, our boiled eggs together we go away we do our, our work on either on the pitch he does on the farm we come back yeah. and we have our, our meals and it's just it was just interesting to see that like that he has the same routine and he's, he's going to 93 so if i make it there i'll be, yeah. I'll be more than happy like and you, you you said something interesting regarding the music you grew up around your father's music was it around the house and stuff yeah and how did you find that did did it, did it sort of bring back memories or nostalgia and stuff that you were thinking oh, I heard that as a kid and now it's that, come back that, to you that's exactly what happened it's actually no the, the music they play like is, is, is brilliant so it's yeah. like every every training session before during and after you're, you're up dancing and it's just a, it's a great feel yeah. I remember the, the, the day before the first came to Ethiopia we came from training and it's when you do your ice bath and you stretch yeah. off and I was in the halls but stretch my hamstrings and Lads, really out the amp. There you go. Everyone up dancing. <laughs> yeah. and it's just, it's a real sort of camaraderie, like camaraderie, I should say, like, yeah. and just gets you sort of the uh, feeling part of the group, like. So, so yeah. of course, I bought in. I was delighted to go up and dance. Um, but yeah, like I just sang the music. Um, it was when we were going to play Nigeria in the World Cup qualifiers. The song came onto the bus, and everyone was singing. I was so like, I've heard that before. Yeah. I couldn't, couldn't think the name of it, I couldn't, couldn't remember the words of it. And uh, I went home and my dad was like, do you remember this song you used to play when you were younger? And we still have the CDs, like, yeah. underneath, underneath the still and all that. Like, I was searching through them, like, mad. Records. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not that bad. That was, that was back in the road. <laughs> no, but like, uh, we're, well, I was flying through the CDs to try and to see if I could just click on the words in the songs. It wasn't happened. And then... Uh, Someone asked me like about that, like because I remember saying it to someone, yeah. and uh, Nennis at the time was my roommate. Yeah. Like, I just turned to her, I seen the question, and heard, Nennis, do you know this song? I was just like, goes, Ned Kaja, Woo Creole. He's like, Oh, uh, Kenel Cabral. And he's just like, You serious? Banged it into YouTube. I was like, Can I listen to it? I was like, I'm not sure if that's it. And then I got to the car, I was like, Perfect. Yeah. How did you do that? Well, uh, no, it's great. And it, hel- it helps me learn the language. I'm starting to build like a, a playlist on my Spotify. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, just a few K okay, fairly. I'll give you, I'll give you some ah, listen yeah, to it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it, does, it, does, it helps with learning the language and learning the culture, which is, which is really, I feel is really important. They say I'm, I'm learning the language, it's very difficult, but uh, I always try to speak on the pitch. Brilliant. Yeah, that's great. Like, oh, yeah, I, think, I think I have to, as you say, the national anthem. Um, Oh, that was so, great. I was pr- uh, yeah, that's something for me. You, yeah, yeah, because I, I, I just feel like I want to be part of this group, and I want the lads to know that yeah. I'm, I'm here to be part of it. So yeah. if I'm able to to sing that and to show that I'm together with them, hopefully they respect me being there. Yeah. Like, and it's just for me, it does, it's important to at least try and be involved yeah. in the group in all parts, not just the football side of it, but the. I think the culture I also well. think your performances help that the fact that you're able to go over there and perform at the level you perform at. That, yeah. that, you know, because it's like anything with football, it's that trust comes. But they're like, he's really into this, and he's performing well, and he's given everything we ha- He's given everything to our country to help us. Yeah, that, for the cause. Give, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, and like that, I think that's what. Well, obviously, 
I've tried to in, instill when I'm going over there that we, we need to give everything and that, that is the sort of the group as well like, yeah. you know what I mean everyone's there just to fight for, for the islands and, and try and bring success to the country that it may have not, not had before like obviously we qualified for AFCON before but we actually went into that thing and we can cause an upset yeah. and we were disappointed the way we, we, we were knocked out like, but like yeah every time I like, go out and put the jersey on I want to give me best like, it just shows you the ambition then has gone up like, 100% so. as you See, say bringing it back to Ireland and obviously with, with your African roots was it difficult growing up in terms of like having a father from Cape Verde, a mother from Ireland, you know, did you experience anything when you were younger that was difficult for you? Because I, we, we've got we've got kids of Af- African descent in the academy now, yeah. and you're one of the players they looked at. And with with the African nations coming, it's a massive, and, you, and that representation that they have because of you, yeah. and the likes of Oidemo breaking into the team, like that's a big thing. And I wonder if that weighs heavy on you, or does it, or do you embrace that, or? Do you know that you're actually influencing these yeah. kids coming? To be honest, I think if like like years ago growing up, I would have probably shied away from it. Yeah. Uh, not anymore though. As I just say, I think it's 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 something unbelievable and something that I've embraced a lot since I've been involved with with Cape Verde. Yeah. I remember growing up in school, like someone asked me, like, "Oh, where are you from?" Like, and I say, "Oh, my dad's from Cape Verde." And the next question you get was like, well, "Where's that?" Like, and be times I'd be getting a little bit embarrassed because yeah, now we knew where I was from, so I ended up saying Portugal. Would you? So yeah, the few times I used to tell people like, "Oh, my dad's from Portugal." Just because it was easier to yeah. explain it, like, and even looking back at that now, with some sort of, I think myself, like, like, why did I do that? Yeah. Do you know what I mean, why didn't I just embrace it and like, do you know I mean, say it in my chest? But that's that was true of my own sort of ignorance and maybe not asking enough questions when I was younger and, and sort of figuring out. The next out. kid doesn't have to say that because of what you're doing. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's this is it. And you know have, what? Like, it was, I kind of have loads of moments from yeah. the way, but this sort of clicked at me. I was getting my hair cut over there. <laughs> uh, uh, probably could do another one as well. But there was three three lads came from Holland. One of them was a barber. Right. All Cape Verdeans, like big Cape Verdean community in Holland. I was like, uh, where, what part of Holland is it from? Like, I think one from Amsterdam, two from Rotterdam. I was like, Rotterdam's a big community, uh, a Cape Verdean community, isn't it? And he's like, yeah, he said, but 20, 30 years ago when I came there, uh, to be someone come up to the street and say, where are you from? And you say Cape Verde, and he's like, no, you look like you're from Suriname, or you look like yeah. you're from North Africa, or somewhere. Like, and they're like, no, no, Cape Verde. And I was like, well, where is Cape Verde? And now everyone in Holland knows about Cape Verde because the community is so big. And I sort of, re- sort of resonated with me because when I was younger, I was telling people, yeah. my dad's from Cape Verde, and no one really knows where it's from. And now, after the back of the AFCON and like last few years, you tell someone to Cape Verde, oh, there's a fella playing in the League of Ireland who represents yeah. that team. A lot more people know about Cape Actually, I've, I've met people who have uh, holiday homes on Cape Verde. They're from yeah. Ireland. There's a... Uh, they a few bar Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, a bar. There's an Irish bar on yeah. one of the islands that you play on. I was actually... They blew my mind. Yeah, so I'll have to go back there the next time. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. No, but that, like I said to you, that representation then becomes massive. Yeah. And I don't... I sometimes don't know if you realise that. Like when... Because like I said to you, them kids coming through are going to look to you, and and rightly so, in my opinion. You know what I think of you. Yeah. But that's... that's give me a, a two-week out there. Now, I but that's massive, like, for, for, for like where you've come from and where you're going, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, You grew up in Crumlin, and then you, you played your schoolboy football with Home Farm Belvedere. Yeah. You, your World Eye class is a late developer in terms of football. Um. Was it difficult then when, when a lot of your teammates that you would have played with were probably going to the UK and you end up probably not getting them opportunities or not being in around Ireland squads at that age? I know you played under 19, yeah, but yeah. was that difficult? Do you know what? It wasn't too difficult because I thought I was, I, was, I was a pretty realist from a, from yeah. a young age. I, I felt myself that I wasn't good enough, I wasn't quite there yet and I needed to work a bit harder and maybe de- develop the game. Like I started off with, with Lord Celtic. Yeah. Uh, I was there up until Tour Danes and uh, our team broke up and I remember crying on the phone to my manager. If yeah. I loved Lords, I was like, I'm not going to play football anymore. <laughs> oh, I was about right. to give up because I didn't know where to go at. That was yeah. my, it was my local club, it was right around the corner. And he said, look, home farm, I'm looking for players. I spoke to the manager, yeah. go on out there and uh, I had three good years out there. Like, we were fighting relegation, but it, it sort of hardened me. Yeah, hard yeah. me. I, I remember cycling across uh, uh, town to get there because it was, it was easier than the bus. Like. Was it, yeah? It was like two hours in the bus. I know, like, I, I, I used to get two buses out of home yeah, farm yeah. at 16. So yeah, was, like, I know, it, I know it, it builds character. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I got robbed in the bus a few times, so I said, <laughs> yeah. if I can, if I can save it, yeah. it might be, it might be tired out to try and look at it. Probably me. But like, yeah, as you say, I didn't even going to, to Belvedere was probably the first time I felt like I was in a really good team we sort of built success and then I got a taste of saying like right there's actually we yeah. can kick on here I can kick on as a player and, and be more successful and then got up to bowls and like, like that people people leave and 
in my head I think to myself, they're gone because they're good. Yeah. I'm not quite there yet, I need to. Right. And I sort of knew that. I knew I was a, a really hard worker, I knew I was uh, very athletic, I had a little bit of ability, but for me, I just didn't understand the game yeah. as well as the rest okay. maybe. So uh, I was just waiting for that to develop and, and come. I had to be patient. But well, you, obvi- uh, you obviously had the perseverance and the drive that a lot of people that, again, that realism and uh, uh, similar... When, like again, when I was coming up, I had that realism at 16, I had, I had a chance to go to bigger clubs and yeah. I, I, I said no. And a little bit was not that level yet, like you know, but I, I still had that perseverance of, oh, I know where I want to be though. Yeah. I, like, and you, I did, your, your, your journey goes different ways, but you're always trying to go 100%. forward with it. And like, like that, I, I've always wanted to be a footballer. Yeah. Since a young age, and I, in my head, I've always had dreams of maybe like from like schoolboy going away yeah. and, and this. But as I got older, I said, I said the realization kicks in and goes, like, if I want to get to where I'm going, what do I need to improve on? Yeah. So I mean, where do I, 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 need, I need to did go? Did you have like, a goal setting thing, or there was it something that you just, did you write something down, or did you um, have something I've, that you thought? I've gotten to goal setting the last few years. Yeah. I think. Um, there's a lot of younger players I think need to maybe get into goal setting and that. Yeah, right, exactly. What? Yeah. what the, the thing with goal setting as well, I like goal setting, but then you need to sort of look at and like how can you achieve it? Yeah. Like what, what what do I need to work? Like if I want to, if I want to maybe say score five goals, every year, <laughs> yeah. like I'm not gonna get it. Like just doing runs after yeah. training. Or yeah. Likewise, if I need to be make my midfielder, I need to be making the box. If I'm just taking free kicks after, like is, is that gonna yeah. like, achieve the goals? Like so that's the that's the other yeah side plan of there. action type of thing. Exactly, how can you achieve it? And like there was a stage as well. I had a, I to chat myself when I was working with the bank. Um, I was part time at Bowles at the time, and I was working with the bank, and I wasn't enjoying my job. Yeah, and it's just it was eating me inside to say that I haven't given enough to football. I saw it like I think I was 23 when I start working the bank, and I was, I taught like like full yeah. time like England and all that or abroad is done with. Right. And I'm sitting there, uh, happy to go about my job, try and get a mortgage or whatever, at this stage. And I probably forgot how young I was. Yeah. Uh, at 23, and I saw. And you, pl- you played. You made your debut at 17, 18, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, and then, exactly. so you, you, you probably five years, and then you decided, right? Was there something sitting in the bank that day that you, you thought, this needs to click here, and and that's uh, yeah. like ultimately leaving Bowles to come to Rovers. Was that? Was that? That conversation you had with yourself that day to say, right, I want to, I want to be full time and I want to challenge for things. Was that one of the driving forces behind that? Like, yeah, you know, one hundred percent. I say, I was just sitting there and I say, I wasn't enjoying me, wasn't enjoying my job first and foremost. And then I was thinking to myself, my football was suffering. Yeah. Like I, I knew it, even at, at Bowles, like I was having a good season at Bowles, but I knew I had a lot more to give to it. Okay. You know what I mean? And I wasn't giving it the the time. I felt I wasn't giving it the time that it deserved. I was, right. I was like, I was trying at six o'clock in Blanchestown. I worked in Blanchestown, but I was kind of work at, at ten to ten to six. Yeah. Just showing up on training on two wheels, like trying to get yeah, out and I know. check that toy off, and on the pitch, like, uh, and that was that was playing on my mind. And then the opportunity of full time football came up. Now it was far from an easy decision because I got into your, yeah. your, your biggest rivals. But I just felt that, like what I spoke about earlier, what I didn't know beforehand, just the, the, the how the thought of the game, like to kind of progress, let the progress to the next level. I felt I could get it with the with the coaches there, with the manager there, yeah. and the coach. I felt like this could help me see the game a bit different. Okay. And take myself to the next level because I knew I had attributes to, as you say, to be to stick in there, to work hard, yeah. the good attitude, but how to sort of control the game, manage games. I knew I know I knew I needed to improve on. So yeah. I, knew if I, I went there. Full time, had loads of time to work on it and give it the give it the time that it deserved. Yeah, your, your name Pico. Yeah. Right, because everybody asked this. I mean, the Lincoln story is great, and everybody spoke about it. Your name Pico. <laughs> I call you sometimes when I'm doing the thing, but I don't think anyone calls you I, exactly. I don't know. Like yeah. I, even like I, I was looking up info on you, and I put in Pico. Yeah, <laughs> like, sure. Doesn't come up with yeah. though. So, but does you, you don't know where it came from? No, well, it comes from my dad. My right. dad gave me a nickname Pico. He, he's called it ever since I was, I, I was born as a young baby. Like, and I always thought it meant like like little man or, or strong man or like a, little like, strong man. Little strong man, all that. Or like, what was the other one you said? Uh, no, it's, it's a mountain. Like, mountain. Strong, like, yeah, <laughs> Makes sense now when you see it. Yeah, but my mates used to give me stick about that. Oh, you could call the high mountain and all this. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's a bit of crack. Uh, and then I remember it was only about two years ago. Uh, we were doing an interview where I think with David Snow he came over to my house to do an interview with me and my dad about the whole cave bears. Brilliant. And he saw I had a little brain, have you seen him sort of scratching his head like, I goes, What's wrong to me? He goes, I'm probably gonna He was rumbled, wasn't he? Yeah, he was rumbled. He was rattled, he was, he goes, I'm probably gonna ask where Pigo came from. And I goes, Yeah, but where, where did it come from? You gave yeah. it to me. He goes, We're gonna have to tell him it means strong man. 
<laughs> I said, like, you, I said, are you for real? Like, Tommy, you gave me the name. Like, surely you know where it came from. Like, so <laughs> we got to have to stick to our guns then, just say being strong, man. Couldn't yeah, be anything. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm happy with that. <laughs> that Rovers, you, you, there was times at the start where you played midfield. Yeah. Then you, you, you've cemented yourself as probably a cent, uh, definitely a centre back. Going to a tree then has helped as well. I feel, I notice watching you how vocal you are. Yeah. Not just. When, I, when you first came, I thought you were vocal in terms of encouragement and getting people going. Now you're now you're vocal in terms of your organisation. Yeah, which is a massive difference. Ah, it's so a, it's completely. Anyone it's can say, "Come on, lads, let's go." But yeah. it takes somebody to really understand the game to go step left, step right. One hundred percent. Well, I'd say there yeah, before. Sorry to stop you. Like everyone can see problems, but can you see solutions? Correct. Yeah, and I think that's, that's great, that that's that, a great that one. yeah that's part of what like you sort of as you develop. Like I keep telling young lads, use your voice, use your voice, and people that like, you say, come on, let's go, yeah, yeah, drive on. That that's great. You need that at times. Yeah. But you say if there's a problem, you see in the pitch, where's your solution? Yeah. So I mean, like I can see where the issue is, and I'm just saying, come on, work. How do you fix it? You can't just try work a hard work at everything the whole time. You need that sort of. Uh, Tactic, tactical work as well, like. Yeah, that, and do you think from playing midfield, because again, different times you played in different positions growing up, played midfield. I actually played midfield with Stephen. Yeah. yeah that didn't go well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not a Jordy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well. yeah, it depends on the team. <laughs> oh, yeah, it wasn't. But um, that's where when I was playing behind them, then I could, I was able to go, go right or go left. Or you yeah. need, we need to go up five, you need to go five. And it was that from playing there to then dropping back to seeing the game in terms of all in front of me in a bigger picture yeah I think that has playing from mid playing midfield to then moving back helped yeah do you know it's probably the opposite for me because okay. I started out as a centre half and uh, look I've always had good legs and been athletic so I've moved up I only hear you moved in the midfield right. yeah, and I, I knew what my centre half wanted yeah I knew like that they just want me up in the game don't be sitting on top make sure you go press and the deli- the least work they had to do, the happier, happier they were. Okay, and then yeah. when I came, came to Raw, was like, I quickly knew that like probably my, my skill set wasn't suited to midfield. Okay. Like obviously we were looking to dominate the ball, like and I was more like get the ball back as quick as we can and and, and try and get on the, the counter attack or whatever. So when I moved back to the defence, as you say, I can see, I can see um, the whole game. But I knew if I was playing midfield, what I'd want. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I knew like okay, I need someone there. I need someone to go press. And if he's pressing, I can't be sitting back here. Yeah. I need to go for ten yards so the rest of you are coming with me. Like yeah. so, all sorts of linked into each other. Pressing, we're all gonna stay. Exactly. We have to be together yeah. in everything we do. Like. And see, Jordan, that time, like you said, that little bit of tough toughness that, say, when you were in the bank or you were at home farm in Belvedere when all the lads were going away. Was there anyone you could? Who who was the person you turned to for advice or help or somebody that you could talk to or have that confidence? I know we were talking that nowadays you go for chats with your friends. You're still very grounded with your with the people you grew up with, and you're able to go out and have these talks and walks. Like yeah. This. Who was that person for you when you were younger, or who is that person for you still? Yeah, you know? no, I don't really think I, I've had anyone like. Do you know what I mean, I love it. I've sort of f- okay. f- figured it out by, by yourself. <laughs> so you great. Like, now, like, yeah, they all got copies. But no, I have to say, probably like two lads that really helped me, like, is is Keith Buckley and, and Lee Stacey. Like, oh, we good. got in this sort of routine uh, when we were at Bowls. That like, look, we were, we were close friends. I was, I was the driver. I was picking them up. Yeah. Like, later on the corner, me pick me book going town to save him cycling everywhere, to save his legs. Yeah. And uh, we're driving out the train together, but we made it a thing that after training we go for a bite to eat, or we meet once a week in a coffee. And then even when we went, I went to Rovers, Lee went to, I think Lee and Booker went to Bray together. We said, no, we're still going to make this a thing, yeah. <laughs> a weekly uh, trip. We go out, we'll have a coffee, and that was brilliant because you go outside of football. You obviously you talk about what's going on, and uh, you're talking about your life like that. And it was just, it was just so important to have that sort of breakaway. I say if you're having like a rough week like that, you can just say it to the lads and just get it out yeah. there. And you say you're having a coffee, it's a real sort of relaxed environment, and that's really helped me. Because yeah. sometimes I felt I was I was really wrapped up in the game, yeah. really emotional, and that's something I try to let go as well. Like that, if me and you were on the pitch and you got the better of me, I'm just like, oh, I need yeah. to get back at him. And, and like I'm not thinking about the game, I'm just thinking about getting back at you and making a tackle or something like that. Where there's probably no uh, game going on behind me. Like so, uh, that was really good in terms of helping me just relax and sort of let go of all the the stress and the emotional yeah. uh, side of football like I think sometimes from the outside in people forget that like, and I was I was ten times worse in terms of taking yeah. things home oh yeah like, brutal at that like if I didn't train well it was the day was gone I couldn't talk to anyone yeah and, and, and it's that level of I, I, I was I got to the point where I was caring too much and it, 
that point of oh, and I needed I needed that release of I need something that can take me away from just this yeah and, and that's where like you said that group of friends that you have or that parent or whoever it is that you can go and like you said clear your head with to go and have that conversation exactly that, that's so important for it's massive it's like you need to get it off your chest yeah. it's like if there's something bothering you get it off your chest to say like if you had a bad game I always say this now I give myself 24 hours if I had a bad game I'm allowed. I mean, I've actually gotten really good at this. Once yeah. I go, once I go home, I think it's me missus. To be fair, like she, if yeah. she sees that I'm in the horrors, so I need to turn around because she'll be in the horrors pretty quickly yeah. as well. Like, so, uh, but I said to myself, if I have do something bad, I have a bad game. Twenty four hours, you can think about it, let yourself be upset about it, and then it's done. But it's the same as if I have a good game. Yeah. If I have a good game, enjoy it. Twenty four hours, right? It's gone. Move on to yeah. next one. What's the next battle coming now? Whatever. Like. Keep a sort of a steadiness about it rather than it. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like if I if I meet the lads on the Wednesday for a coffee, I'm not talking about how good or how bad I was yeah. on the Saturday, on the Friday, or the Saturday. It's just oh, yeah. it, it's gone. We're on to the next thing. Like, and is and that something you've gone to see somebody about, or is it somebody a mental plan has put in place for you, or is it something that you've read up on and that you thought, you know what, I'm going. That's what I'm going to be. Like, I'm going to try and use that technique, say to help me good and bad like you said yeah good and bad I think it's more sort of like just experience like, like as I say like you've, you've done, we've, I think we've all done it where you take stuff home with you oh, and yeah. you realise it, it, it's not helping you no. I think and once you take a step back and you realise like what's sort of holding me back here yeah. and you realise that you're, you're going into like the Friday's game think about last Friday yeah. and you need to let it go so it's just sort of the experience I've had like say going through the league and going through games that I realise right, like what do I need to be at my best and it doesn't need to be carrying the weight yeah. and the stress of the whole week that's gone beforehand or is like something's gone on outside of football like you need to sort of deal with there and then and, and move on because like life keeps going forward yeah exactly it's not going to stop no nah. do um, you feel yourself do you, do you feel you've proved yourself right in terms of moving from the bank and mo- leaving like a team that gave you a chance but leaving balls to come to a a team that will allow you to challenge for honours or allow you to be full time allow you to have that base for training where everything you need is in the one place yeah do, do you feel vindicated by that or do you no, I don't mean vindicated as in oh, obviously you made the right decision for, from your point of view because you've won trophies as well but even just from a personal point of view from a self growth even yeah um, it's probably really, it's, really, yeah, <laughs> long winded on there I'm just trying to really think what you said at the start the train question <laughs> <wasn't it? laughs> no but it's not what it is uh, uh, first of all I hate, I hate reflecting what yeah. I'm playing so like it might, might, might be something at the, at the end of my career like hopefully I've got a good few years left like that I'll sort of look back on but like look definitely it's helped me improve and it's 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 uh, it's no secret like you're training put more hours on the pitch you say you're, you're recovering better that's the big thing as well like the recovery point yes. side of it yeah <laughs> I'm getting on now uh, but the recovery side of it is massive and it's like being able to to work as hard as you are in the morning and even when you do extra it's still like I'm, I'm up here now at, at 3 o'clock like you know what I mean but like uh, if you had to put the feet up afterwards and Instead of waiting around all day, going to training, or you're, you're sitting down on the nine to five, you have customers coming in saying, "Where's my money and all this?" And I don't know where it is. <laughs> the yeah, have the it. banks have it. Yeah, and then you're, you're sort of moving on. You're rushing out to train with your your head fried. Like so, uh, yeah, it might look. It gives you the you say the platform to give everything to football. And if I I felt always felt if I can give everything to football, it could be successful. And look, we have a great we have a great group of lads as well, yeah. and we're all sort of pulling in the same direction with that. I I also feel you then. I'm not mentioning retirement for you here. I, 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 I saying, hope no. not. <laughs> no, no. Maybe I mean, after this walk. <laughs> you have no regrets then? 100%. You, know, you, you hit the word there. When I was in, when I, met, when I actually signed the contract, I said, no matter what happens here, if this is, if this is not going to be a success or, or whatever, I'll have no regrets. I got it out of my system. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was the same, uh, I think, two years ago. I, I, was, like, a big, uh, I loved the gym. And I was him and Han doing a PT course. And some, actually, I went to see something about like, uh, careers advice. And uh, they were saying, look, if you want to do a six-week course in the personal training, just do it, get out your system. Yeah. It's like it wasn't, like I said, like not carrying it, it was out my system. The exact same thing was with uh, decisions to sort of sign for hours. Like, I wanted to be full-time footballer. I felt like I'd get the, the best of what I needed here. It's just how I applied myself to it. Like, if it didn't work out, no problem. Yeah. I, well, I, wouldn't be sitting, I wouldn't be sitting here at this age thinking, oh, I should have took the opportunity yeah. about five years ago, five, six years ago. Uh, and yeah, I was like, no regrets. So, so whatever happens, and look here. So we've been successful, which is great, and uh, and hopefully we can have a few more su- successful years. Like, but absolutely no regrets. Brilliant. And, and going into this season, then won back-to-back leagues off the back of the FAI Cup win. The FAI Cup win was massive. Huge, yeah. Because it Huge. Because that belief that 
we can win something as a group. A hundred percent, yeah. Obviously, then the the restricted season, which is when you won the league. I I was it was very noticeable how much it meant to you last year, chasing the league with the fans back in the stadium. Yeah, yeah it was very important to say. And, and I I I called it out that I was like, these never got to experience that last year, so it, yeah. it, it's it's that extra meaningful that. We never got to celebrate the enjoyment. The yeah, the, the, the enjoyment. The and what I say is, see the obviously the restricted season, probably the most focused I've been, like really? ever. Yeah. Like it was, it was. Because of no fans or, or no, because we had the long break. Okay. Because during that, like sort of, I think it was maybe six to eight weeks. I don't know, might make actually sorry, more. See Jordan them six to eight weeks with no football. Yeah. Was, was that tough? No. Like yeah, tough, like. Yeah. Was, yes and no. People struggled with it mentally. Yeah. No. I. 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 Got, I, I got that. Like I say. Like there was. Yeah. The. I had me days where I was just okay. like, I'm feeling down here. I don't know yeah. why. Or just feeling flat. And I knew. Okay. I knew it was because nobody knew. Nobody knew where the the finish line was yeah. with the whole sort of uh, with the COVID. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You don't know. Wait. When am I back in training? Or when is this going to be end? When can I go out for a meal with me, with me yeah. missus? Yeah. I meet me friends because you're afraid to meet up with friends at, at this stage. Yeah. But. What I got that's into everyday experience. That's just not. That's not just a football. Oh, a hundred percent. Like I say, I, went through that. I remember like my man and dad coming home from work and they sort of they're going straight home. There's no sort of yeah. going out for a walk. They're afraid to go out walks like yeah. with people because like, you have this sort of fear in, inside you because we didn't know uh, enough about it okay. starting off. But like what ha- really helped me is, um, and again, like, I, I, I sort of got had friends with, with Lee and Bucko as well. Like we sort of like used as an opportunity to develop because yeah. we knew we knew the league was going to come back. We didn't know when. So what could we do in between? In between, that's why I said like, I think I was training maybe three times a week, yeah. it, not like mad sort of burning myself out, right. but just what can I do to get better? Like working on on my left foot, or you say like doing sort of oh, stuff yeah. to tick me over. Do you not see me? <laughs> <laughs> I have two left feet now. <laughs> I never <laughs> yeah, that. yeah. No, but like just little things like that. Like I use as an opportunity to get better, and I saw it as an opportunity that like when we do come back. We can hit the ground running. Yeah, I can hit the ground yeah, running. Yeah. Got to be ready to go. The lads must have done it then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, had a bit of a jet lag. Yeah, no. But I just, I just, I just saw it differently. Taught myself when, yeah. when do you get like I said, because maybe because we played five games in and we were unbeaten. I was just think, when do you get a sort of top a, a chance to sort of take a step back and a breather and assess everything around you. Like in the season, you're just like, right, yeah. next game, next game, next game. And the same in the walking life. It's just like, right, next day I have this deadline. I have these targets here. When do you get a sort of a pause and I just take a breath and I just go, right, breath, like. yeah, what can I work on? The world has stopped spinning for a second. What do I need to work on here? Yeah. Uh, what can I get done? Hello. <laughs> what can I get done or what can we... Uh, what can be improved on? And look, don't get me wrong, I wasn't Mr. Positive every day and there were some days I didn't want to get, get out of bed like and just because just I was just sort of tired and all that and you, you need to give yourself them days as well. Yeah, yeah. I think we beat... So hard on yourself. Yeah, yourself, I think you know? we beat ourselves up sometimes when yeah. we're just not, not feeling today or we're feeling a bit down. You're allowed to feel down. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So obviously, if you're feeling down for like a week or two, like, do you know what I mean? There's, there's obviously a, a problem there. And you need you need your help there. But like, if you're having a bad day, no problem. Have a bad day. Yeah. Don't just let it ruin the next day. Don't, then. Don't yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Don't let it bleed into the next one. Yeah. yeah. So what's what's the ambitions then? Obviously, I, I know the answer. But yeah. What's the ambitions now for this season? Um, improve on last year. So yeah. win, win the league and improve on last year. We, we've probably assessed the season that's gone by. We've, we've identified maybe sort of places where we can we can be better. Yeah. Like and that's obviously bringing it in, into into this year. But no, look, we have to retain our league. Yeah. Um, there's a, there's a thing there. I didn't really don't really understand that until you win the league. But uh, you want that hunger to win the next one. Or you don't want to give it up. You yeah. think you have to. You feel the sort of pressure like you won the league last year. So there'd be expectation there, yeah. and you sort of you're welcoming the point. You go, you know you're right. Yeah. Let's go, let's go and every game, every training session becomes important because you feel like you're being chased. Yeah. Which you are like, like we did it with when the dark and cork were going for legs. We were so eager to get up there and chase them and chase them down. And the rest of the teams are gonna do that as well. But yeah, look, the number one goal is to try and uh, retain our league and look do you help as a player who's done it and has been here a long time now. How many seasons have you now? I think I'm going into my seventh. Yeah. Yeah. Six and the group that signed are probably the only one that's still here from that group I think yeah Finner yeah. and Borky Borky's been away and came back yeah, yeah. I think right. we're the only three yeah. did Finner sign back the same year yeah yeah Finner signed back yeah. the year I signed and do you instill that then into the group do you, are you able to go this is their demands this is their expectations as 100%. well and these are our levels yeah know? yeah exactly and you know what you can't rest on your levels either because like yeah. every year it gets harder because yeah. like if you've especially now when you win two back to back people are thinking 
can't see these win. I don't want to see these winning it again. Yeah. So they're coming at you even harder. So that means your levels have to go up again. Like, but a hundred percent, they sort of like you see like. I think I was here maybe three years, three, four years before we won the league. Yeah. So we knew how hard it was to take, yeah. to, to get there. Like, and you have to sort of demand it every day. Like, this is what it takes. And they say, as you, as you, as you win the league, you have a tag on your back. Yeah. People want to come at you. So you need to go raise your levels again. Like, and it's, it's every day in training. It's every match. You can't just settle for what, what you did last week because the next team are saying, these, these fellas won again. Yeah. You need to go after these again. Yeah. You know? And then you're up then. Yeah. Europe's a big that, one. Is that one of the things that you identified that you'd say, right, well, we, we want to have a we want to have a prolonged European run? Yeah. Because you just ran into a good side last year. I know, yeah. I've done, I, I done the game. And I probably, do I better than a lot of people? I felt that as well. Yeah. Now, look, yeah, we probably let it get away. Like, the, the, we can't, can't really defend the goals that we gave away okay. there. We're, we were really bad, really off it over there. And that really finished the tie for us because I think if we defend a bit better, we might come back with a closer scoreline, come back to Tala. Maybe the game the game got away from us. And over there, over there it really did. Like and against that's talent. Against talent and it was yeah. it was poor goals. We probably felt like like they were good sides, don't get me wrong. They yeah. punished they punished us. Uh, but that we probably felt bit, wasn't it? They, yeah. they, they punished the, the mistakes that you made do, you did get punished and that, yeah. they were the bit where you thought, right, like, that's just one mistake and then bang goal yeah. and then the next one bang goal you're thinking right every time we've coughed up something here we've been punished for they, it they took advantage and, and it was very good Like, but look it's look, it's, it's always been an amb- ambition of mine to, to make the group stages of, of Europe and maybe like even when I was, when I was at Bowles in Europe I was thinking oh, it'd be great to get to yours maybe a bit naivety but like it, it's it's always something no, 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 but even they say every time you sort of you play your, your first uh, qualifier and you get through, it's like yeah. you start thinking like it'd be great to get yeah. to the get to the group stage, but it just goes to show you how hard it is, and you need to need to take every game um, as as it comes. Like, but um, yeah, look, I say after last year, we feel we've let ourselves down, so we'd be really hungry when the European games come around. What to hear? You obviously players have come back this year. The squad's got stronger. Um, you've lost. We've lost. You've lost a couple as well. Yeah, go. naturally, yeah. yeah, naturally happens. Um, where do you see yourself going over the next few years? And then beyond football, is there anything that you think right that interests me, or what do you do outside of football that you think right? Well, like you said, which you're going for a chat with your mates, it takes you away and gives you that. Is there any other interest that you have? Yeah. So there's two parts in this. Like you're gonna play for a long time. Yeah, fingers Barry crossed, you say, yeah, fingers crossed. Athletic, you have a great understanding of the game. It means that when your athleticism does go a little bit, yeah, yeah. which <laughs> I don't know. We'll go. We'll go. <laughs> I remember you, you were yeah, yeah. flying around the no, place. No, yeah, no. yeah. yeah it will go. Yeah. Mine, mine went quicker. <laughs> but when that goes, you still have a good understanding of the game, play a long time. Yeah. What's your ambitions? To, to how long have you set a target? How long you want to play? No, not yet. And, and again, like I, I don't like that. I say I, yeah. I don't want. I don't want like to sort of pay no attention to my age. Yeah, yeah, just just keep going. Once I feel good, feel happy, good. I, I'll keep going. I say and to, you know, like. I keep trying to get better. Like even now, like you know, people saying you, you're slowing down, you lose your pace. So I'm thinking, no, I go the opposite. I'll get quicker. Yeah, you will. I'll get quicker. I'll build myself up. I will work away. How can I get quicker? How can I get faster? How can I? Be better on the ball or, or see the game. Be better, think quicker. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Force your eyes in your head. Force your eyes in your head. Of course. Yeah, yeah. But like, um, like that. Now, just again, trying to improve every year because I know if, if I try and uh, try and improve, how is he? Sorry. Uh, if I if I try and improve, I'll be better for the team, and yeah. hopefully the team be better for that. Like you know, like so that's always the the goal. Try and push ahead. Uh, probably coming away from football. Uh, I like cooking. How are you? I feel bad. What are you doing up here? Just the youth group. Yeah, the group. Yeah, very good. How's it going, lads? Didn't realise that. We do, we do all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Our activity. That's brilliant, isn't yeah. it? He's enjoying it, lads? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. This is the so first day with us, so we well, took them from the school, so we walk with them out of the school. Ah, nice so. little half day, was it? Yeah. Yeah, don't mind that on a Monday, do we? <laughs> yeah. That's great. So you yeah. great tour, man. Well done. Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah, it's nice. playing in the African the Nations. African Cup of Nations, yeah. Yeah, yeah good experience. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Ballier. Black Day, Jordan Moore Road. Oh. We walk out of the Echo and Centre. Do you know Glenn Crowning? Do you know Glenn Crowning? Up the Rovers, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up the hoops. <laughs> Up the hoops. <laughs> yeah. the mental health and keep them well, isn't it, lads? That's brilliant. Yeah. Chilling in this here. Uh, Score a few for you, right? Are you playing the President's Cup? I was on the bench. The lads won. 
Yeah, 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 that's that's why they won. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. 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 Obviously, other than football, what are your uh, any other interests? I know you you just got a house. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, just got engaged. just got a house. Uh, no, Whoa, no, not yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After this goes. Yeah, out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need to get the skates on. Yeah. No, but like the, the house, obviously, what was brilliant is something that we've been trying to do actually yeah. since lockdown. But obviously, when that came up, the uncertainty about people's jobs and that the banks yeah. weren't really doing it, so it maybe took a year or so longer uh, to actually way, get I, the. I, I, I don't think people realise this neither as well. See, as a footballer. Very hard to get a house. Very difficult. Very like hard are we in Ireland, like people don't realise this how hard it is in Ireland to so, get a house as a footballer. So hard with, with the contract situation. Yeah. And you know what? I felt after the uh, I think I signed a three year at Rovers. I felt this was the best time yeah. to get it. Like and like, look before that you're only getting forty two week right. contract. There was no chance. You need yeah. the, you need the job. That's why I, I had the job in the bank. Well. Yeah, yeah. But the security, like obviously, I felt it was a strong position. And even at that, geez, I remember we went to a broker. Now she was brilliant, but. She was on the on the phone for like every day or every week, and uh, I remember telling the missus like, uh, "Deirdre rang and five banks were actually refusing us," and that sent me missus all day. Just like, this is never gonna, never gonna get. It. I was like, "Look, we just need one bank, mm. just need one bank to say yes." And thankfully, a few days later, I think Bank of Ireland said yes, mm. and uh, now they wanted loads you of documentation. Discount on it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> another bit of cash back yeah. every night. But like that, we got. It is like I, 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 it's stressful. Yeah, but yeah. People look in at you and they see. There he is, he's playing with Cape Verde, he's playing with Shamrock Rovers, he's flying, he's doing really well, he's like signed a big contract, he's looking at footballers and think, yeah. oh yeah, that, and underneath it all you're going, I can't get a mortgage because I actually play football. Yeah, yeah, like, it's, like, it's, thing, you know it's, I mean? so, it's so hard, yeah. yeah, so the contract situation is so hard, and there's my, my missus is a teacher, she's a secondary school teacher. For sympathy, people think, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you look lucky you're playing the sport you love and it's great and you're going yeah. like, no, but I, I, oh, you can't just buy a house yeah. so no matter what you know, like, like, yeah. you know what I mean there's no wages in the League of Ireland that'll let you go out and, and buy and a house with it, like, yeah. yeah and the banks sort of go no no you've on, you're only going to play till you're this age and they, they sort of I, like that's the bit that I don't think people actually no really no and, it, and it's difficult it's like my, my missus is a teacher has a really steady job and you think to yourself yeah. no brain I, I was quite sort of relying on her to yeah. sort of yeah. get yeah. us over the line and yeah. I was sort of holding us back because I knew if this went tits up yeah. like it was on me like uh, but now look it's like, like the we, main one, the house, yeah she yeah wears like, she wears a shower just cook and clean <laughs> yeah. I actually enjoy it to be fair <laughs> the house is what um, I'm trying to uh, there's, a, there's a dish in Cape Verde called Kachupa my dad makes it it's like a sort of uh, bean and corn stew but what they do is the next day they strain it and they fry it for breakfast. Oh, lovely. So it's beautiful. I must, must get yeah, you over to try and enjoy you know. some Thai fried eggs yeah. and get you So I will start to, to try and bits and that. And I like think a few ideas. back to your other interests. You said you've done personal training. Yeah, I'm big into the gym. I'd actually like to be maybe involved in, in a team as maybe a strength conditioning coach. Oh, and okay. like maybe as a coach with that in the background. Um, and does coaching interest you in terms of like... Like football, and football and coaching. Not, it didn't. It never did. But last one or two years, I just yeah. sort of like love being around the group. And yeah, say as you you just say you start seeing yeah. it different in your head. You just realise, right? Hello, hello, hello. Uh, you say as you see the game and different in your head, you feel like we well, can help people here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Especially the young lads coming through. Like I remember when I was in their position, if I had someone tell me something a different way, maybe I'd, I'd catch on a bit quicker. Yeah. So uh, just yeah, just definitely scope for that. I would never uh, rule anything out. Like. Um, but I say beforehand, I was like, I said, never see myself as a coach. And now that's changed. But um, to be honest with you, especially after, after making the decision to bank, I say, I want to go full time. Yeah. No regrets. I wouldn't mind going back to the bank now because I've done what I want to do. Oh, really? so, you know, yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind. Not even, I know, yeah. Bank, no, I know bank land saying. resort. But like I say, I could t- take any job now and I'd be delighted yeah. knowing that I, I gave football every chance. That goes back to the thing we said about not having the regrets. Like, you know, like, 100%. Like if you, I, I say this to people. A lot. Again, I know about when I finished, couldn't play at the level I wanted to play at. I didn't have many regrets because if you had offered what I'd done to me a four, as, as a 14 year old kid, I would have yeah. snapped the hand off it. Yeah, 100%. So I always feel it's the lads that didn't maybe fulfil the potential, I didn't maybe go for something that are the ones that might have the regrets where that's what. That's what I'm saying about you coaching and that positivity that comes out. That when you're standing in front of a kid and go, 
go for it. What's yeah. the worst that happens? A hundred percent. Like if, a, you, if you fail, so what? Fail better. Like that's the it, thing. You exactly. I mean? You learn. You learn yeah. so much. Like, and that's the uh, probably big thing as well that I've learned. You, your failures are, are learning. A yeah. learning course. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, say I, I don't look at them as failures anymore. But what, what have I learned from it? What can I take away? Like, and even like that. Like even trying trying today. Like we had two young lads. I had Gideon and, and Sean Sean Jones Carey. Uh, on the on, on my team, like, and you could see them, like, great players, and they make a mistake. You can see the start, maybe they're thinking yeah. about it too much. Just say one or two words, and might help them. Yeah. And you think to yourself, you kind of stand back and have a look. Yeah, yeah grand, grand. I remember you doing it, uh, Graham, with me and Webby. Me and Webby were doing passing afterwards, and he said something like, uh, about clearing it with your left foot. Yeah. And I was just trying to do it in the <laughs> <laughs> during lockdown, I was trying to walk, it, but you said, you said something like that, like, when you're kicking it with your left foot. Try to take the ball back at you, get more height and distance of it. And I remember saying to Webby because he was playing left side at the time, and I was thinking, we said, that's actually good there. If I'm under pressure, I'll just try and get a little bit back, so push up there. Like, the ball has to yeah, be it was something so small, but like in now the game situation, I'm thinking we said that we kind of get himself in the pressure, just get height and distance yeah. on it. Like, yeah, I yeah, yeah. Wish I'd have done it more. <laughs> It's a, it's, a, it's a club that has built on community spirit. Uh, there's loads of great people around the club that I met when I first came in here and they sort of showed me the way of how things are done around here. And don't just be happy to be here, bring it to the next level. And, uh, that's important and that's what's important really still to say. I'm not just happy to be here, I want to keep improving and take it to the next level. And any young guy or any new player that comes in, you need to know that. And yeah. I try to say, show them the as well. One thing we say, and, and we say it to the kids in the academy, we say it to even the coaches, is a custodian to this football club. You're passing through. It's important you leave it better than you found it. It's important you add to it. We never diminish it. You never bring it down. You add to it. That's all we are. We're just custodians that are passing through at any given time. The club belongs to the fans and to the people. And even the members that stay with it. And that's why it's really important. You know, so I appreciate you coming up here and getting to know you a lot more. I know I knew you before, but getting to know you really in depth. It's been great. And thanks for how open you were. It's been really, it's been an absolute oh, pleasure. Well, I love being here. It's great to clear the head, right? Yeah, great to clear the head.